Take a look at the historic Ford GT40, hear a real owner's likes and dislikes, and discover how many stars he rates it. The Ford GT40 is an iconic car with a memorable racing heritage. Henry Ford II had wanted a win at a European racetrack and was in talks with Ferrari to buy Ferrari. But when Ferrari abruptly cut off the talks, an enraged Henry Ford launched the GT40 project with a goal to win at Le Mans and beat out the reigning champion, Ferrari. So how did this rivalry impact our owner for today? Well, it's a 1966 Ford design. Um, Henry Ford wanted to win Le Mans, and back in the 60s they made about 115 of these and managed to win Le Mans four times from 66, 7, 8, and 9, which was the four years I was in high school, which meant it was like the biggest thing in the world to me. And one day I was going to have one, and I was able to do it. And this is Jim's dream come true. In order to achieve its goal, Ford partnered up with British manufacturer Lola for the development of the GT40. The design bears a striking resemblance to the Lola Mark VI and was unlike anything seen on American roads at that time. When it came out, American cars, you know, had, had fins and they were square and boxy looking and, and this was such a beautiful car in mid-engine, it was very the cutting edge. The, the Cobra seemed sort of old-fashioned, like 50s cars, and I, I just thought this was just, just beautiful design. The design of the GT40, with its road-hugging stance and smooth fluid lines, can hold its own against the design of any contemporary performance car. The body is sculpted to allow air to move through the car, whether it be for the radiators or for the air engine intake. The 40 in GT40 refers to the height of the car as required by the race rules. The design of the doors, which when the car came out, I thought it was the neatest thing in the world. It's, it's not very practical the way the roof is. It, if someone's parked next to you, you can't open the door enough to get in and out. It's not really designed for parking lots. Jim makes it look easy, but getting into the car takes a little bit of skill. A removable steering wheel helps. Once you've made it past the wide sill, you slide yourself into the seat, buckle up, attach the steering wheel, and you're ready to go. The seats are super basic, and if you need to make any adjustments for your height, you actually have to unscrew the pedals and move them back and forth. And how's the visibility to the rear? It's okay, except in the quarters, trying to park them sometimes can be hard. It's really hard to tell how far back the, the tail is. Inside, the car feels right out of the 60s. There's cool analog gauges and flip switches. The windows are fixed except for a small operable portion. What's the experience inside the cabin? As far as heat goes, the, the radiator's at the nose and the engine's at your back, the radiator at your feet, and the hot water pipes run between the seats and the windows don't open. So it does get warm in there, but luckily there's air conditioning and it's not a very big space. And the air conditioning can keep up with it except on the hottest days. And then it, it kind of falls behind, but it's, it's manageable, but, but hot. Now, if you wanted to buy one of these, you couldn't just walk into your local Ford or used car dealer. These are continuation models. They're custom made to original specifications and have a chassis number that continues from the original manufacturer. Here's how Jim got his. There were kits and things available, but they weren't, I really wasn't someone to build a kit. And they finally came out in 19, excuse me, 2007, they made a deal with Sapphire Spares that owns the right to GT40, a company called High Tech Automotive in South Africa. They make about one a month, and it's, it's a GT40. They're given GT40 serial numbers, and, and it's essentially a continuation of the original line. This is the 264th GT40 made, and uh, I just love it. A continuation model comes with the chassis, the body, suspension, and interior, all made for the original car. You get to choose the engine and transmission. In Jim's case, he picked a Roush 342R V8 with a ZF transmission. Music 
the engine makes an amazing 450 horsepower and 425 pound-feet of torque. So what's the experience of driving it? For a British race car, 60s British race car, it drives very good. It's uh, manners or handles well, um, easy to drive in traffic, it's, clutch works well. It's, you know, each one's gonna be separate to it. It's not a mechanical thing that came to the car, it was something I did. But it's very easy to drive and enjoyable to drive, even in traffic. It's a very powerful car. I've, I found that if you keep the revs below 4,000 RPM, it drives like a fast sports car. You 4,000 shift and it's fun and it's everything. If you get above five, it'll light up the rears most of the time. One of the downsides is the car was originally designed, the, the front tires were very narrow and they had wire wheels. And by this time, the, the fronts are, are wider and even 69 car, they were even wider than that. And each time they did that, the, the turning radius got less. So it's, you sometimes have to take two, three, two, three grabs at, at tight turns. Every morning when I know I'm gonna drive it, I wake up and I'm in a good mood and going out to the car and looking at it and warming it up and all of that is, is really fun. I, I really enjoy that whole feeling. Right, I don't tell the time when I park it and then it's kind of, ah, I'm back, you know. If you want an original Ford GT, that's going to set you back millions. What does a continuation model cost? I purchased it right at the beginning of 2008. I put down the money. There in South Africa, it took months to get it. But, but I, uh, I, I did the purchase in early January of 2008 when the economy had just collapsed. And they were, they'd lowered the price down and I managed to get a pretty good deal. I got it for 69,000. I think now they're 110, 115. And how many stars out of five does Jim rate it? For me, what I was looking for, I would say four and a half. You know, it, it, it really did most of the things I, I wanted very well and think some things I worried about weren't a problem. So it, it's been a really good experience. If you're considering a GT40, take a look at our other owner reviews and let's get you on the show.